بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم uh, today we will perform the extra oral examination for a new patient coming for the oral diagnosis clinic uh, the first part was that we inspected the patient while entering the clinic uh, his body gait posture his balance his uh, uh, body build uh, he is fine he is nourished um, the color of the skin of the face is normal he was balanced everything was within normal limits and then we observed the nails already but we will look again at the nails the nails color is uh, pinkish uh, slightly bluish but because his hands are cold uh, okay pressure and then we release the pressure the pink uh, color will come back again so uh, it's normal uh, can i see your nails please uh, the uh, the nails the form is normal also uh, they are smooth no pitting no ridging no dysplasia uh, the structure is normal the concavity is normal and the convexity of the nails everything is normal the skin of the hands generally general look at the skin of the hands uh, will show that the skin is within normal limits i cannot see any skin any obvious skin lesion then we move to the examination of the head and neck uh, looking at the head the head form and shape is within normal limits there is no uh, um, obvious difference or change in the skull shape uh, no changes in the structure obviously seen uh, after looking at the general appearance of the head we look at the eyes and uh, can you put your head back please we look at the eyes there is no obvious um, variation from normal like uh, increase the distance between the eye pupils they are within normal limits and um, in another record we will um, uh, demonstrate the cranial nerve function and examination uh, i can see that the movement of the eye is within normal limits uh, can you follow my finger here Uh, looking at the ears, the skin of the ears and behind the ears because we look for any first we look at the shape of the ears if they are deformed so this may be part of a syndrome and if there is any lesion like uh, basal cell carcinoma or squamous cell carcinoma in the elderly people who are sun exposed or if there is any other skin lesions this is one ear let me see the other okay and the other so both are fine now we examine the eyes the sclera and the conjunctiva uh, the sclera is slightly reddish so we ask the patient if you have allergy if you have if you did not sleep well last night if you have any uh, disease in your eyes that you are following your doctor or you are visiting no no okay they are normally like this mm. okay then we look at the conjunctiva itself and it should be pale pink it not not white not red but i see it now it is uh, sorry it is uh, dark pink so i think there is, is some kind of allergy going on with the uh, conjunctiva of the of this patient and i think he might need to visit uh, a physician just to check um, for the reason for that and the appropriate treatment okay uh, now the skin of the face looking at the skin of the face uh, do we do we see lesions scars uh, acne any laceration ulceration any swelling i can see some acne here uh, another acne here so i will write down in the form uh, mild acne why it is important to write all the findings on the skin because the lymph node examination might correlate with the findings my, uh, we might find reactive lymph nodes uh, reactive to the acne or the other lesions present on the skin so i look at the skin of the face the skin of the neck the skin, the skin of the ears okay the symmetry of the face now for the symmetry i need to go either directly in front of the patient or i go behind the patient so on the dental chair we cannot stand directly in front of the patient we have to go behind the patient okay and we lower the dental chair now i uh, i put an imaginary line in the midline of the face okay i draw it imaginary and then i start comparing each part of the face on the right with the left i look frontal with the frontal eyebrow with eyebrow 
cheek with the cheek, zygomatic bone with zygomatic bone, uh, angle of the mandible with the other one. So uh, every single part of the right side is compared with the left side. There is no asymmetry, no obvious asymmetry. Mild asymmetry is acceptable. It is fine to find uh, some mild asymmetry, but obvious, no. If I find a swelling, for example, here, uh, if I found the angle of the mouth or whatever uh, region is uh, different than the other, I have to record down all the details of the finding. Okay, so now for the symmetry, the face is symmetrical. I look now at the profile of the face. Okay, after symmetry, the profile of the face. If it is uh, slightly convex, straight or concave. And I see the patient is uh, like a class one or slight convex. I look at the lips, if the lips are competent or incompetent or potentially competent. This is important because for patients who, are, who, ha who have incompetent lips, this means that the air, there's mouth breathing or there is continuous dryness of the gingiva, which will lead to increased inflammation of the gingiva or abnormal um, excessive inflammatory response from the gingiva to the plaque because of the excessive dryness. So now the patient is having symmetrical face, class 1 profile and competent lips. Okay, now we will go to the TMJ and for the TMJ we need to stand behind the patient. First, we use inspection, we look at the TMJ, there is no swelling or no redness in the area and then palpation. I locate the TMJ by uh, look, uh, putting my fingertips one centimeter and a half in front of the tragus of the ear. This is the tragus, one and a half centimeter, it will be about here. And then I ask the patient to open and close. Open. Now please open and close five times to the maximum opening and close back. Maximum, actor. Come on, al akhir. More. Okay, so now I was observing and palpating at the same time. For the palpation, I did not feel any click or extra movement of the condylar head. For the inspection, I was looking at the maximum mouth opening and at the deviation or deflection of the mandible. There was no deviation, no deflection, and the mouth opening was within normal limits. The maximum, uh, the normal range of the mouth opening is 35 millimeter to 50. Or three fingers, at least three fingers from the patient uh, fingers uh, he can be he can place three fingers inside the mouth while it is maximally opened can you try yes so his normal his mouth opening is normal now let us look at the uh, lateral mandibular movement uh, move your mandible right and left laterally yes he can move to both sides there's no restriction in one PMG Okay, this is called the extraauricular examination of the TMG. The intraauricular examination is that you use the little finger, you place it inside the ear, and you palpate the head of the condyle, and you ask the patient if there is tenderness of the TMG. Open and close. Close, open. Come on. Okay, fiala. No tenderness. Okay, now this is the intraauricular, it's an extra and intra. If we have a stethoscope, we can uh, put the, do the auscultation examination. We can put the stethoscope, samam, hotta ala al TMJ, and then we listen to the clicks or pop or crepitus. And we should differentiate between these three sounds. Crepitus, it is like two rough surfaces uh, causing friction over each other. The click is when you have uh, just sharp single sound. And the pop is the sound, um, it's, it's similar to the click, but it is used to describe the movement of the condyle at the maximum mouth opening when the condyle uh, go out the uh, glenoid fossa. It gives one strong sound, and some pop. Okay, we finished with the TMJ, now we'll go to the uh, lymph, uh, before lymph nodes, we finished the muscles of mastication. Um, for the masseter, 
we ask the patient to clench, clench, and then upon clenching, I can identify the anterior border and the posterior border of the masseter. I palpate the insertion at the angle of the mandible and the origin and the zygomatic arch, there is no swelling. They are both symmetrical. Sometimes you find a hypertrophic masseter muscle, larger, larger, yani one side larger than the other. So in this case, both are having the same uh, findings. Okay, for the temporalis, we palpate the fan-shaped temporalis muscle on the lateral part of the skull. Is there any pain? Fi alam? Wala fi alam hon? Okay, there's no tenderness and they are within normal limits. Uh, we start now with the lymph nodes. We have the, we start with the pre-auricular lymph nodes. Pre-auricular lymph nodes, these are the lymph nodes anterior to the tragus of the ear. Okay, I palpate with the pulp of my fingers, rounded movement. They, I don't feel anything. Normally, we don't feel the lymph nodes. And if we feel them, they are the size of a pea, a small pea. Or the habt al normally. If, uh, usually, we don't palpate them if they are not enlarged. Uh, we have also the parotid lymph nodes, slightly more anterior to the uh, preauricular. They are superficial to the parotid gland, and we have another group deep embedded within the parotid gland. So palpate the preauricular and slightly more anterior. We have even the facial lymph nodes, but normally we don't palpate them. They are the infraorbital and the buccal and the supramandibular. They are not palpable usually and we routinely we don't palpate. So start with preauricular lymph nodes, parotid lymph nodes, then go to the post-auricular lymph nodes. They are also called the mastoid lymph nodes. And if there is any tenderness over the mastoid process, okay. And then go to the occipital lymph nodes in the midline of the skull, posteriorly. Uh, you go to the bulge of the skull here. It is just below it. They are in the midline. There is nothing palpable. Okay, now I look at the sub, or I examine the submental. I ask the patient to sit in the upright position. I ask the patient, is an upright position and tip the chin slightly toward the chest. I come from behind the patient and palpate, or from in front, both are okay. I palpate the submental, I don't feel anything. Now I palpate the submandibular of the right side. There are different methods, uh, but one of them that I follow is that I ask the patient to tip his head forward and to the side I am examining. And then with the pulp of my fingers, I take the lymph nodes and palpate them against the inferior border of the mandible, meaning I put the lymph nodes between the pulp of my fingers and the bone and the mandible. Here, they are not palpable. Submandibular lymph nodes are three to six lymph nodes usually. And in this, in our patient, they are not palpable. In the other side, the same way. I take his head to the other side. I palpate the submandibular lymph nodes, not palpable. Now the cervical lymph nodes, I keep the sternocleidomastoid muscle relaxed by asking the patient to keep looking forward. And then I palpate the superficial lymph nodes with my fingers following the sternocleidomastoid muscle. These are the superficial lymph nodes of both sides. The, the superficial lymph nodes. Now I ask the patient to look at the opposite, to the left or to the right. Now he's looking to the left. I am examining the deep cervical lymph nodes. The deep cervical, they are either behind the sternocleidomastoid or in front of the sternocleidomastoid. So with the fingers, I palpate all the way. You can use this way. You can, okay, the other side, please. Nothing, nothing is palpable. And at the end, we examine the supraclavicular lymph nodes. The supraclavicular lymph nodes drains the GI tract. If they are enlarged, we need, if, the, if they are enlarged, we need to uh, consider the GI tract. Uh, supra 
clavicular lymph nodes, supraclavicular lymph nodes, here and there. They are not palpable. Okay, now the glands, we look at the uh, thyroid gland. I go to the sternal notch. Okay, I put my finger in the sternal notch. I got two fingers above the sternal notch, like about two centimeters above the sternal notch. Here, you will find the isthmus, the, the junction between the two lobes of the, uh, of the thyroid glands. Okay, sternal notch, two fingers, and then these, this is the thyroid gland, and this is the isthmus. It is not easy to palpate the normal thyroid gland. Uh, okay, it is not easy to find it if it is not enlarged or not having asymmetry. In the case of our patient, it is not, uh, and there's no asymmetry, no asymmetry and it, there's no hyperplasia. There are different ways. Either you just palpate the midline on both sides of the midline. We ask the patient to swallow again. The thyroid gland will move while swallowing. Here it is not, as I said, it is not palpable and not obvious. Or you can take all the soft tissue to the other side and you palpate. Okay, you with your fingers take the thy push the thyroid to the other side and do the palpation. Okay, this is another way. Now the parotid gland. Uh, usually the parotid gland is not. Uh, again, you cannot uh, define it clearly by palpation, except if you have parotid gland enlargement. Uh, in the case of parotid gland enlargement, you will see asymmetry, and you will see that the lobe of the ear is elevated. If the tail of parotid is enlarged, you'll see this ear lobe is elevated. So compare both sides, looking for symmetry, for swelling, and look at the ear lobe if it is enlarged or not. Now for the submandibular salivary glands, usually they are palpated while you palpate the submandibular lymph nodes. If you find or you feel any enlargement or hardness, while palpating the submandibular area, we need to do more examination. When we do the intraoral examination, we will examine the submandibular lymph nodes by manually, from outside and from inside together. We will do that in the demo, the other demo. Okay, and uh, by this we finished the extraoral examination. Thank you.